the first piece on the program and the last piece, the sacred and profane dances by Debussy and the introduction in Allegro by Ravel are really bookended pieces. They bookend the program, but they were written uh, in adjoining years of 1904 and 1905, and they were composed in response to a private war that was going on between two rival harp companies in Paris at that time. One was called Erard, and the other was called Pleyel. And in order to understand the rivalry, I have to tell you just a little bit about harp technology, so bear with me for just a second. If you look at these harps, these are called double action pedal harps. And they have about 46 or 47 strings on them, and they have seven pedals. And the reason that they have these pedals is because with only 46 strings, they don't have anywhere near the number of strings that you have on a piano, which has 88 keys. And of course, if you were to try to cram 88 keys in a row on a soundboard of that length, you would have to have arms the length of an orangutan in order to reach the lower notes, or you would need fingers the size of toothpicks in order to play them if they were all close together. And so somebody in the 19th century came up with a great idea, which was to create a pedal harp. And so when you put it down, the pedal down halfway, it raises the pitch a half step, and when you put it down all the way, it raises the pitch a whole step, and that allows you to play in all keys. Well, there was a man named Gustave Lyon around the turn of the last century who didn't like this business of harpists constantly shifting gears, and he thought, maybe we can invent a harp that doesn't have any pedals at all. And he invented one called the chromatic harp, and in his invention, you had about 40 strings on one side and about 40 strings on the other side, and in order to make them accessible, they crossed in the middle. They were interlaced. And the company that made that harp was called Playel, and they came up with this great marketing strategy to invite the most renowned French composer of the day, Debussy, to write a piece that would explore the capabilities of that harp. And so that is the reason that we have the sacred and profane dances. Well, the other company, Erard, which was making these tried and true pedal harps, thought, we don't want to be outdone by Playel, so they invited the other most famous and accredited composer of the day, Ravel, to write a piece that would show off the capabilities of the pedal harp. And in case you are wondering who was the winner of this competition, I think the unalloyed winners were the harpists and, of course, the lovers of harp music because we ended up with these two absolutely gorgeous pieces. And the loser was the chromatic harp. And the reason for that was that with all of these strings crossing in the middle, if you played it with too much force or played it too loud, the strings would bang into each other. And it would cause these clangorous clashes. And of course, Debussy was not only a great inspired composer, but he was also a practical musician and he knew. And so when you hear this first piece on the program, The Dance is Sacred and Profane, you will notice that it is very subtle and it is very quiet and, uh, and gentle, perhaps because he didn't want to activate those clangorous elements. And the last thing you may be wondering is why is it called sacred and profane dances? The thing to understand is that Debussy was not a conventionally religious man. He didn't come to churches. He had this very reverential attitude towards the mystery of nature and the mystery of life. And I found a quote from him, a rather eloquent quote about his feelings about all of this. He said, I do not practice religion in accordance with the sacred rites. I have made mysterious nature my religion. When I gaze at a sunset sky and spend hours contemplating its marvelous, ever-changing beauty, an extraordinary emotion overwhelms me, and my hands unconsciously assume an attitude of adoration, and that is what I call prayer. And I think you will hear in the first part of this piece, the sacred part, this sense of an adoration of the mystery of nature. It has this aura of antique religiosity. And about halfway through, about five minutes into the piece, you'll become aware of the fact that the string players have begun to lilt back and forth in this lovely waltz. And then you'll hear these joyous arpeggios rippling up and down the harp. And you will know that we have entered the realm of musical profanity. <laughs> and in case you uh, need a little bit of reassurance, the piece is not X-rated. Uh, in, in French, this word profane uh, means it doesn't carry this pejorative of impious or 
sacrilegious. It just means sensuous or earthly. And so, in a sense, like these strings on the chromatic harp which cross in the middle, it really is about the intersection between the spiritual and the sensual aspects of the human psyche. And it's completely family friendly. It's, it's G rated. So, enough said. I hope you'll enjoy the concert, and I'll be back to uh, introduce the second piece in the program. <laughs> 